Hello, everyone, and welcome to Geeks at the Movies, where we talk about the geek side of movies and TV. I'm your host, Shane Goodrich, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Jacob Desitels. So go on, guys. Uh, we're going to start off every show with news, and today we have big news. We have found out who the next Spider-Man. Marvel and Sony have announced that actor Tom Holland is the new Spider-Man. They also announced that the director of the upcoming cop car, John Watts, will helm the new solo film. Jacob, I don't know who this is. Do you know anything about this guy? No. <laughs> well, there you go. Next segment. Okay. <laughs> but what, what do you think about them going for this young actor? He's 19 years old. Uh, I didn't know this, but Tony Aguirre apparently in the last film was in his, like, my age, like, he's in his mid 30s. Yeah, and <laughs> Andrew Garfield was almost 30. Yeah. Really? I, I didn't yeah. know that because he, he, looked, he looked young. Yeah. Tony Aguirre, it was, it was kind of obvious, yeah. but he looked young. So. Are you happy based on a little you know about this? Yeah, I am, because I'm glad they're going for the young actor, because uh, the age they're going around is uh, for, like, 15 or 16 for Spider-Man. So I, I like that they're doing that, because he actually looks that age. Is that yeah. how he is in the comics? Yeah, he, he's oh, he's usually in high school in the comics. That, that's the, the usual thing. And I also like, well, I don't really know anything about the director, but... It kind of makes sense that they're going for an unknown director because that's worked in the past with uh, Marvel films. They got on um, the Russo brothers, who were directors on the show uh, Community, and then that, they, they made the, the uh, Winter Soldier, which was one of the best Marvel Interesting. films. Interesting. I didn't realize yeah. they were unknowns because I didn't come to that until after they were. Yeah. They were already known. I thought they were a big name. I thought it was the Russo brothers, but they were unknown when they were cast as yeah, the director. Well, yeah, they they, they, had, uh, they were just known for the work on Community, pretty much, and then. Uh, yeah, they and then uh, uh, the director for G Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, James Gunn. He only directed one other film before that. He was an indie director, pretty much. That's a bold so, choice by Marvel. Yeah, and then now they're. Uh, I feel like this is more of a Sony casting than a Marvel casting. I don't. I don't know why, but it just feels like that. Does um, that concern you? A little bit, because, I mean, they got on Mark Webb, who was kind of the same situation for the Amazing Spider-Man. He was kind of an unknown. So it's a little bit of a concerning choice because they went to Marvel for help. So I'm, I'm sure Marvel was involved uh, with the casting. Still. I hope they were involved. Yeah. So um, and this, his uh, new film that's coming out, Cop Car, I haven't uh, I haven't seen anything from it, but I know that like, Kevin Bacon's in it and it's been getting a lot of praise from uh, the uh, film festival that it was at. So that that that's uh, gives me some hope. <laughs> so. Um, so, how excited are you overall about this Spider-Man movie? Are, are you optimistic? Are you cautious? Because this, this is part Marvel, which we like Marvel. We like the MCU. We like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And he'll be part of that. But we don't so much like uh, the, so the, late, the later Sony uh, Spider-Man films. Uh, yeah, it, it, I'm optimistic for it. Just because Marvel's involved, it's part of this new cinematic universe. And Marvel's not going to do something that's going to hurt them. They, they have, they're obviously optimistic for it, too. Do you think that, I mean, he's going he's gonna to be in a uh, MCU Marvel-controlled film before he's in the Sony film. Do you think that maybe he'll be good in that, but then Sony might uh, misstep for their own film? Well, maybe, but they're going to have uh, producers from Marvel in charge. Okay, uh, like, so they're involved e yeah. e even in the Sony productions. Yeah, um, they're not like so much creatively, but they're still going to have the the big guy, Kevin Feige, from Marvel involved with the, the Sony films, too. They're, they're going to have the guy that's, that's overseeing the whole MCU, yeah. making sure, okay, does this make sense? Yeah. Is, this, this, is this consistent with what we're doing? Yeah. All righty, then. Um, our next item is, The Last King of Scotland and, and the butler actor, Forrest Whitaker, has been added to the cast of the first Star Wars anthology film, Rogue One, which is set to hit theaters December 16th, 2016. I love Forrest Whitaker. From the last King of Scotland, he was amazing. What do you think, Jake? I think this is great casting because he—he's such an—he's kind of actor that can just fit into any kind of movie. Like, uh, he's not so much like um, some an actor with a more recognizable face where like uh, it will like take you out of the movie, like uh, Samuel L. Jackson in the uh, in the prequels. Like you're like that's Samuel L. Jackson. Like he's, he doesn't fit in this really. And but, it's not, not only that, it's Samuel L. Jackson is in. It's Samuel Jackson. He, yeah. he kind of is always the same person. Yeah. It reminds me of Tom Cruise. He's also been a very similar personality. Yeah. But we saw um, in The Last King of Scotland, I saw that movie, and I didn't know anything about Forrest Whitaker. 
And I assumed, oh, well, maybe he's actually African and he was born in, in the African country. Then I saw him at the, at the Oscars and I went, this is yeah. unbelievable. He's, he reminds me of Daniel Day-Lewis. He can really embody a role. Yeah. And um, I can also see him uh, going on either side of, yeah, as for the Empire or the uh, Rebellion. I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I, I guess I, I don't think he'll be like some alien or something. I don't think they'll cover up his face or anything. But so I think he'll be either the uh, Empire or the Rebellion. Because I can see him giving orders on either side. Who do you want him to be? I kind of want, I don't know, because I kind of want to be uh, him to be on the Rebellion because... He has, he's kind of like the good guy, but I also want to see him as a villain. He was so good in Last King of Scotland. Yeah. You know, he got all sweaty and started yelling and screaming and going crazy. Oh, I loved it. I mean, that role was amazing. Yeah. What, do you, what are your expectations for Rogue One? What do we know about Rogue One? Not really anything, except that it's directed by uh, Gareth Edwards, the director of uh, Godzilla, and it's going to... The, the, new, the new Godzilla? Yeah. And um, it, it's going to be a war film. Like, Ooh. it's going gonna, it's gonna to take place before episode four. It's going to be about how the rebellion, you know, pretty much got where it was by, uh, by like, uh, the time episode four rolls around. So there's, it's going to be, like, maybe, like, guerrilla warfare in space? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty much going to be that. <laughs> um, a, we've talked before about uh, some of the other Star Wars anthology films. What do you think they're, they're trying to do? Are, are they going to build something like the MCU with Star Wars? Is that, is that what they're, they're going for? have a cinematic universe for Star Wars? Well, they already kind of have that universe already set up. So I think they're just uh, focused on expanding it and showing more stories and having uh, like expanding that galaxy that we've all come to know and love by now. And Jake, tell me, you have been reading some of these books. Are, are you going to read some of these books? You're, you're a resident Star Wars expert. How much does this excite you as a fan that Star Wars is coming back and, and it looks like from my, from my viewpoint, they're, they're doing it right this time. Because a prequels, eh, I did not like them. So what do, you, what do you think? How excited are you? I'm really excited. I, I hope J.J. doesn't let us down. No, please don't let us down. I'm going to, I can't stand another disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to sit well. But so I'm um, really excited for episode seven. Um, I'm so excited for Rogue One. I'm, cause I, I want to see how they're going to ha handle these spin-off films, how they're going to go in the future. Because this is going to be like the first side story that we see that's a feature film. So that, that's really exciting. And uh, I have hope for Gareth Edwards, because I, I liked Godzilla. I didn't love it. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do with this, because he has that dark, gritty tone that, uh, that this uh, war film could, uh, could benefit from. Yeah, the, the, I, I, I saw Godzilla, and I felt the pacing was off, but I liked a lot of the action, the way, the way it was yeah, shot. That, it felt epic. It, it reminded me of Man of Steel a little bit. Yeah. It felt epic, like yeah. something big was happening. The last 20 minutes of Godzilla, that fight scene, that was, that was amazing. I yeah. wish they had extended that fight yeah. scene. So if, if this guy can bring that, that, that sense of, of, like, oh, my God, this is a disaster. Things are, bad things are happening. Uh, maybe there's a, a, a part where the Empire surrounding the Rebel fleet and this yeah. epic battle ensues. Yeah. I want that, but keeping the spirit of Star Wars at the same time. And what do you mean? What, what's the spirit of Star Wars, Jake? Like, a grand adventure, pretty much. You know, it has that, like, exciting tone that just... It makes you want to... Like, Star Wars, you know who to root for. That, that's what I feel like. You know who, who you're rooting for, but you also love the bad guys at the same time. So you don't want him to go too dark and gritty. You yeah. don't want this to be like actually like Man of Steel, like I mentioned, yeah. where it's very little humor. It's all yeah. serious because that's not that's not Star Wars. Yeah, that's not Star Wars. Like you can keep the really dark and gritty, um, like weird stuff for the the books. I've read some of those books, <laughs> but, and, and, they're, and they're great in their own in in their own context. But in the films, it doesn't really work that much. And in the films, of course, I mean these, these there's a lot of money. There's a lot of people involved. It's one thing to write a book. And, yeah. and send out by one person, but if you're going to put so much effort and money into it, yeah. these are only going to come out so often. Yeah. Keep with the traditional Star Wars tone. That's what you want. Yeah. Cool beans. Next up, um, keeping in the world of Star Wars news, pictures have been released of a new line of CoverGirl makeup that has the Force Awakens logo on them, along with lines from the previous movies and lines that haven't been heard before. These lines include, I'll finish what you started, and immune to the light.
I find it hilarious how we get Star Wars news. First, we get it from Legos. Oh, look at this new Lego set. And now we're getting it from CoverGirl Makeup. Now, Jacob, you know how much I like CoverGirl Makeup. So I was really excited. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Tell me, what do you think about these lines? Uh, I think they're, they're really interesting. I think um, that will finish what you started. That's from the scene in the trailer where uh, we don't know who is holding the... Uh, Darth Vader helmet. Mm. I think that's where that line's the from. The melted Darth Vader helmet. Yeah. And um, it means to the light, I don't know who that, that might be uh, uh, Andrew Sir and Andy Serkis' character, the, um, who, we didn't cover this on the show, but Andy Serkis, is, he's, pl um, he's the actor who played Golem and uh, Caesar in the uh, uh, Planet of the Apes movies. He's playing a character called uh, uh, Su Supreme... Leader Snoke. S no, yeah, I think yeah. it's Snoke. Yeah, Supreme Leader Snoke. It sounds so, a little silly, but it's Star yeah, Wars. Yeah. Names are silly. Yeah, Count Dooku. That sounds like a silly name, but yeah. then you think of Christopher Lee, and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, this but, is badass. <laughs> yeah, but um, but uh, so I think he's gonna be like the uh, you know, the big like the Emperor. He's gonna be in the background. He's the big bad that's yeah. gonna be at the end of the trilogy. And you yeah. think they're gonna use? I um, mean, we know that he that he's really good performance capture. So you think that's what's going to be he's going to be used for? Yeah, yeah they actually uh, released a picture um, for this uh, Vanity Fair magazine. They had a picture of him in there, and he had all the stuff all, all over oh, his face. Oh, oh, cool. So, yeah, he, he's going to be doing his thing that he's known for is for a performance capture. And we know how good he is at performance capture from the movies you mentioned, Planet of the Apes and Golem. I mean, he's, yeah. he's he's amazing. Yeah, and um, and he was the one saying the uh, he was doing the over the lines in the um, in the first trailer. Where he's like, there's been an awakening. It was, yeah. That was that was him. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, uh, um, that I think that was confirmed, and um, it was, and you can kind of hear the Caesar voice as he as he's talking. Andy Circus yeah. is a is, is a badass, and he's he's like he's a new geek icon. He's yeah. in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He's a, he's in uh, Avengers. He's in the Marvel the MCU. Yeah. Uh, and now he's in Star Wars. This guy is totally badass. I love this guy. He's amazing. Yeah. Um. Uh, so what do you think about these lines? They sound like standard Star Wars lines to me. Yeah. I am less of a Star Wars fan than the Jacob. I, I, I like the original trilogy. I especially like Return of, the Jet, Return of the Jedi and The Empire Strikes Back. I find those movies very enjoyable. But I got really soured by the prequels. And the prequels have, you know, I, I think some generic lines. They, they don't come off well because the prequels in general don't come off well. If you take some of these lines out of context, like... Uh, Luke, I am your father. If you just put them down there, maybe they would sound silly, but within the context of the movie, yeah. it's totally cool and awesome. Yeah. So I see, I will finish what you started, immune to the light. It's hard for me to say because I don't have the context. It could be cool, or it could be cringeworthy and cheesy, but based on the trailers we've seen, I think they are not going for that tone. Yeah. They're going to go more for the original tone, which of course was a little cheesy. It yeah. was a little silly. You know, this is, this is, this is a space opera uh, people with you know, characters like Jabba the Hutt, Ewoks. I mean, there's a lot of silliness going on, yeah. but it's well done, right? Just like the comic book movies. There's a lot of silliness in the Avengers, but we breathe it because they, they have good storytelling, and that, that's what matters. And that's the problem with the, the prequel. It didn't have good storytelling. So you couldn't throw in the, the, the cool fan lines because they were just because it's already not well done, so not just, just eh, it just feels worse. Yeah. So I'm cautiously optimistic yeah, but I, I still can't go over the fact that we're getting news, and the fact that Star Wars is so popular yeah. that 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 we're getting news from from these other sources. Because another movie that might have cover girl makeup or Legos, this might not be as big of a deal. But every little piece of news for Star Wars, people jump on it, and yeah. we jump on it. Geeks yeah. of the movies, we're gonna keep talking about it because we we, get, we know you guys like it. Yeah, the one line they need to have is I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> the one line. All right, now jumping off of the Star Wars. We're going off into the MCU. It has now been reported that Mark Ruffalo has been added to the cast of Captain America Civil War. He was quoted as saying, If Robert Downey Jr. says I'm in Captain America, I'm in Captain America, damn it. And I will wait for the day that my call sheets show up at my doorstep or my script. At this point, I'm told I'm in it by Robert, which I'll take as biblical. But I haven't heard or seen from production yet. Is he in the movie? Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Robert like, Downey Jr. Yeah. They're paying him forty million. That probably mm. paying forty million for nothing. Yeah, <sighs> I, I think, I think he's in it. I don't think Mark Ruffalo was supposed to say this yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure he's going to be in it. I, he might. 
I feel like he's going to be more of a minor role, which I don't think, which is kind of weird because, uh, because he's only because the way that uh, his character ended up at the end of Avengers Two, it's kind of weird because, but he has to play a minor role because it's already filled with all these, and he hasn't shown up for filming yet, and it's been filming for a while now. So it's a nine month. Is it is it nine months of Civil War? Or is that the um that's um for uh, Infinity Wars? Okay, that's for Infinity Wars. Yeah, so they they've been filming for a while now, and he hasn't uh, shown up for filming yet. So it might be a post credit scene. It, um, is he it, in space? I hope so. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what, what, what is that? What is that space thing? I I don't know much about about okay, the Okay, so universe. in the comics, uh, the Avengers they're like, okay, Hulk is too powerful. He's too much of a, a danger. So we're gonna send him into space. They send him into space, and he ends up in another. Uh, when, just just to go back a little bit, when you say send him into space, what is he in a ship? And they just y- yeah, they, shoot they, him they, off. Yeah, or? they put him in like this capsule, and they shot him off into this other. I think they put coordinates to like some random planet. He ended up on this planet where there's uh, this. Uh, it, it's, it's like run by these like Roman like inspired uh, aliens, and they have like this coliseum, and um, and then that that's what the uh, Planet Hulk storyline. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you and you want that to be be shown in the movies? Uh, yes and no. I want I want to do it as long as it fits with what's going on. I think that he might uh, end up with. The Guardians somehow, even though J- the director James Gunn has said that Guardians and Avengers aren't going to cross over, which they, they obviously are. And, yeah. and, and, and Infinity Wars, even if if one, part one or part two, it's going to happen. So I think uh, he might end up there, and it's going to be a way to like, because they're not going to do the uh, Hulk spinoff movie anytime soon, and so he's not going to be in any of these other films. So that's a good way to just like. Do you want to see the Hulk spinoff movie, or do you think that the Hulk as a character is problematic? In, in a single movie, I really do want to see the Hulk spinoff movie, but the only problem is, is that you got to have Bruce Banner in there too, so it has to be like a a mix between the two. But people, all people want to see is the Hulk. The Hulk. So that, that that's the problem. That's why they haven't made one yet. So I think um, I think once they get a really good story, and something that they can have more Hulk than Ruffalo, then um, then they can they can do that, but it's not going to happen anytime soon because we already know all their films that are going up to uh, 2019. I personally liked the the, the Hulk movie that that was yeah. part of the MCU yeah. where they had yeah. now they had a recast. Uh, some other people found it uneven, and, and it's difficult to do a Hulk movie because when he is when he is actually the superhero version, he's just like a mindless beast yeah. kind of. Um, to, to further talk about uh, Civil War itself. Now, day by day, more we learn about it, more and more it sounds to me like Avengers 3. Yeah. Every time they announce more cast members, like, at first, oh, it was just these people. Oh, well, we're going to put a few more Avengers in there, and a few more. Now, the only one we're missing is Thor. Are, are we going to get Thor? Is Thor going to be in there? Are they going to throw him in there? Maybe. Are we going to get the sexy bass scene again? <laughs> get another one of those? He'll, he'll probably be in there, like, on, on some, like, uh, computer screen with his shirt off for no reason. <laughs> but... They'll, they'll probably have a, they'll at least have a mention of him at least, and but I think the Hulk makes sense because they have a the general from the Incredible Hulk in there now, so I think that makes sense. That I love that continuity. Yeah. I love because they kind of yeah. ignored that movie, pretended it like it wasn't yeah. part of the MCU. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah, no, the, it is part of the MCU. Yeah, I love that they're going all the way back to Phase One for for the first film of Phase Phase Three. So that, that's really cool. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm. Maybe it'll be just in the beginning, like he'll be um, the general will be like chasing after the Hulk, and then he'll like get away at the very. And then they will see him for the rest of the movie. I don't know. It, I think it'll be something, something minor, just because they've been shooting for so long. But and I'm I'm optimistic because we talked about this this before the how how many people are in it. I think that it's going to be. I'm optimistic that it's, it's not going to feel like. Avengers uh, 2.5 and it's going to be Captain America 3. I really hope it's Captain America 3 yeah. because I love Captain America. He is great. But I have to say, Jacob, you, you, you say you're pretty confident it's going to be Captain America 3. I am less and less confident by the day. Yeah. I mean, I see some of those early shots from from the set and they show like that. What's, what's the his the guy he's fighting against? They've seen the early, the early screenshots. I can't think of his name. Oh, um, Crossbones. Is yes. It? Yeah. And I, what I'm thinking is we're gonna start the movie with Captain America having to deal with like a classic villain. He gets him off in ten minutes, and now it's suddenly something else. Well, see, I think it's gonna be the opposite. I think it's gonna start off with Captain America 
going on an Avengers mission, Ooh. and then it's going to like split off from there, and they're all going to the go new on. Avengers with with, with yeah, Falcon, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, and Scarlet Witch and all those, all those people. I think it's, it's going to start off like that, and then they're they're going to split off onto separate sides. Like some, something's going to happen that triggers the Civil War, and then they're all going to go on either Tony Stark side or going to stay with Captain America. And this is and this is going to be uh, self-contained because because yeah. they're going to be setting up for that the next movie. So it's not like it's going to be Civil War and they're going to be warring up until yeah. the Avengers. So and and you'll see uh, in a short on our YouTube channel. Check it out, uh, Geeks at the Movies YouTube channel, that, I, that uh, Jacob and I will be talking about the actual comic book that I read. So uh, uh, how thrilled are you as someone that has read the comic that this is actually coming into play? I think it's awesome because we get to see, let's have Robert Downey Jr. in another film for one, and then we're going to we're gonna get to see two classic, uh, well, now they're classic superheroes go head-to-head -head with each other. Um, that, that, that's really exciting for me. Yeah. Excellent. Next up on, on our list, we got the first set pictures for the new Ghostbusters reboot. These pictures show Melissa McCartney, Kate McKinnon, and Kristen Wiig in costume on the first day of shooting on the film. The fourth member of the Ghostbusters team, Leslie Jones, is absent in these pictures. I saw the original Ghostbusters movies. I may have seen the cartoon. I think I had that green dude. Uh, I can't remember his name. The little, the little like ghost that they yeah. said their pet when I was a kid. But really, I... I am yeah, kind of cringing when, when, I, when, I, when I hear about this new Ghostbusters reboot. What do you yeah. think? Um, I'm lukewarm about it. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Below medium. That's below medium, folks. Yeah, like, I'm, uh, like I, I saw the first Ghostbusters movie. I haven't seen the sequel or the cartoon or anything yeah, like that. Don't watch the, the sequel. The first one was great. The um, Marshmallow Man's comical again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, I I haven't seen a lot from uh, Melissa McCarthy. I know that uh, some people don't like her. Other people love her. I've seen, I saw, I saw Bridesmaids. Really? Some people don't like her and other people love her? That's yeah. not like anything else yeah, in the I world. Know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's directed by uh, Paul Feig, who directed um, uh, Bridesmaids. With, I, I'm pretty sure it is, at least. There, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but... I'm pretty sure it's directed by uh, Paul Feig, who directed Melissa McCarthy and uh, and Christian Wiig in uh, Bridesmaids. What was, was Christian Wiig in Bridesmaids? I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't remember anymore. I am not sure. Okay. Yes, we are getting we are getting confirmation from the Joe I. Okay. Yes. So it's definitely going to be a comedy, which uh, fits with the Ghostbusters uh, feel that they've always right. had. Right. It was a, it was a silly. They, they made no attempt really to make it serious in the original movie. Yeah. It's been a long time since I see it, but they. They didn't. They weren't even yeah. trying. It's just ridiculous and over the top. Yeah, and in these pictures, you can see that they're they're all like in regular clothing, except for um, Kate McKinnon's character. She's kind of dressed up, kind of weird, which has like the goggles on and stuff like that. But um, I like, I really like Christian Wig. She's a comedy actor who started off in SNL. She's she's become really big in in the uh, the comedy movie world. So I really like her. I don't really know much about Leslie Jones or Kate McKinnon, but. Um, I I I want it to be good because it looks um, it looks like it'd be really good. And they also have uh, Chris Hemsworth in there as the receptionist, so they're doing kind of like the gender gender reversal thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, I think I think that could be really funny. Um, maybe, maybe he'll like uh, at the at the end he'll do something heroic. I don't know, but but uh, uh, but are you excited in general about the? The Ghostbusters universe, because it's because it sounds to me like they're trying to create another universe. Because yeah. ever since the MCU came out, the u creating these universes is, is a new thing, which I, yeah. I enjoy generally. But I just can't get any yeah. excitement up for this. I just can't. Eh. Yeah. What I think they're going to do is um, they're going to do a male uh, Ghostbusters uh, film after this. I think they've already said that, and uh, maybe they'll have Chris Hemsworth be part of it. Maybe <laughs> that's why they're putting him in this. I don't know. I I think. I think it could be good if it goes in one direction with um, the silly tone, but not over the top silliness where it gets kind of ridiculous. That's but, see, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting yeah. it just to be a constant line of one, a constant stream of one-liners and absurdities and like a sil silly uh, physical humor where they're tripping and they're falling and everything just doesn't really work out. That's what I'm imagining. That might not be actually anything like what it is. Yeah. So, but if they go, if they go. 
where it's funny, but it has like some serious moments with like the horror aspect of it, then that could be really good. Because like uh, th at the end of Ghostbusters, where it has like the demons and the, like the, the ghosts are all coming out of that portal, like, that, that that could be like that. That was kind of not, really, not necessarily scary, but it had like that that like demon dog that was like running <laughs> after them, like that, that that was kind of creepy, like. And, the, and with the technology they have today, they can... They Make can, it much better. Yeah. Because if you look at the original movie, it's a... Uh, it's a little dated. Yeah, <laughs> a little, little bit. Just yeah. a little dated. So, um, I'm going to go from lukewarm to uh, cautiously optimistic. Ooh. It's like, cause I haven't seen is that, any, is that. Is that above medium, cautiously optimistic? What's uh, the scale just, here? Just, just a little bit. Just a little mm -hmm. bit. A little bit above medium. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I haven't seen any of uh, Paul Feig's other movies. He directed another movie that came out... Um, this year called Spy, which had Melissa McCarthy and uh, Jason Statham in it. So he knows how to handle like action. I, I, people said it was good. They didn't say say it was great, but this, but uh, a lot of people. Oh, liked it. that that was that like a uh, kind of silly comedy spy yeah. movie with yeah. like the, the woman that looks like the soccer mom yeah. sort of. Okay, that's that's who yeah. she is. Um, let us know in in the comments on YouTube about what you think about Ghostbusters. I'm still sticking with below medium for me. Jacob is now above medium. What do you think about it? So comment on the YouTube channel, Geeks at the Movies. Check us out on Facebook. Comment. Comment wherever we're at. Um, and now to a part of the show where we talk about anything from the geek side of movies and TV. And this week we're going to have the epic conversation of epicness about Daredevil. I will, before I ask Jacob anything, I will tell you that Daredevil is awesome and you should watch it. Now talk to me, Jacob. He's right. This is awesome, and you should watch it. Um, but what I love about Daredevil is that it's another... It's part of the MCU, but it feels different. It's a lot more serious, like, rugged and brutal. Even. Brutal. Yeah. Brutal is so, a good word for it. Yeah. Um, and that's what you need to make Daredevil. You, can't, you couldn't go with uh, the more, like, happy, silly tone that for in the other Marvel movies, which I, I like. They, they, they fit in those movies. But with this, it, it, it that didn't fit. So this is the way they needed to go, and I like that it's a TV series too. They, they didn't do the movie, um, so they went with the, the TV route, and that that was the way they needed to go because you can tell more story with it. Yeah, I generally yeah. find myself more invested uh, in TV shows than movies. When uh, I remember we were in a car ride and people were asking me what my favorite movie was or my list, and I had a hard time coming up with it. But if you asked me about my TV shows, I could immediately name off to you because, like you said, you can get more invested in it. You remember them more because yeah. it's a series of episodes. How many episodes is, the, the, is Daredevil? Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen episodes. Um, so after you saw the, the, the first episode, were you hooked down or, or did it take you a little bit to get into it? Because they, they waited to, to show yeah. some key characters there. They didn't show some right right at the beginning. I wasn't immediately hooked in, but I was definitely interested. I was like, okay, this, this is not what I expected because I, I, I didn't really know what to expect because they weren't showing a lot in the marketing and everything like that. So, But I, was, uh, I liked it a lot. So then after like the first three episodes, or no, actually after episode two I was hooked because the ending of episode two, once you get to episode two, it's awesome. So, um, yeah, after episode two, I was hooked. I was I was in, and then after I finished the show, I was like, "Wow, this is one of the best uh, TV shows, our uh, superhero TV shows that I've seen." Yeah, I, I really like the freedom that Marvel has with Netflix co compared to, uh, say, Agents of Shield or yeah. some of DC shows that they're on. They don't, they don't have the same freedom that they have on Netflix. I really yeah. like, the, I like, I like as a new platform for, for entertainment, Netflix is fantastic. And I guess they also have like Amazon now and some yeah. other companies that, that are getting into this. And, and Daredevil just shows you this is how it's done right. To me, the production quality is like HBO. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of HBO's dramas. And when I saw Daredevil, I'm like, this could be on HBO, yeah. which for me is high praise. Yeah. Um, Let's, let's talk about some of the characters in Daredevil. So first of all, let's talk about Daredevil himself. What do you th like about Daredevil? What do you like about the actor? Do you know who the actor's name is? Uh, Charlie Cox. Charlie he, Cox. He was in Stardust, which a lot of people haven't seen, but if you have seen it, that, that's an awesome movie. Um, yeah, he's, he's a really good actor, and he really showed his acting chops in this, in, uh, this show. He wasn't, um, he wasn't like the greatest. It wasn't, um, it wasn't like one of the greatest performances. But he was, he was a really solid actor. He did, he did what he needed to do. Um, and he played that uh, dual identity uh, theme well. Like with Batman, he, um, he's like Bruce Wayne, who's like the kind of like 
polished uh, billionaire guy. Playboy. Yeah. Man about and, town. And with uh, uh, Matt Murdock, he's kind of the same, but poorer. He's like, <laughs> like really poor, a lot poorer. So he's, because he's uh, trying to be like the professional lawyer, but but going, but what he does with, with his business goes along with his uh, superhero, uh, what, what he's doing with the, oh, his, his superhero life. So, um, yeah, he hel- helps the people that uh, that come to his law firm. Yeah, he often knows from his daredevil persona. Yeah, and then he goes out and uh, beats up people, and then Foggy's like, "Hey, what happened to those people we were t- dealing with? Oh, they're 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 in jail now. I don't know, <laughs> something like that." So yeah, um, yeah, he he did that really well. Uh, I really liked um, the, the the black costume was weird to me at first, but then the ninja costume. Is yeah, I referred to it as yeah, and th- this is minor spoiler. He gets the um, classic red uh, Daredevil costume at the end, but uh, he was... Were, were you annoyed by the fact that they showed that right before they released it? Yes, I was. And, and um, I, so I saw that, and then halfway through the, the season, I, um, like on the Netflix thing, on the Netflix, Netflix page, it showed it had him in the black costume, and then halfway through the season, it showed him in the red costume. So even before I was even finished with the series, and I watched it pretty quickly, they showed the red costume. So it was really weird, but um, but he's but I really like the black costume. Uh, it was weird at first, but then I got kind of used to it, and it, it, I actually actually liked it at the end. And then, but then the red costume is is much better still. Right. I I, lo- I liked also how it was uh, realistically improvised. Uh, for example, he's wearing like MMA style gloves because when you when you're punching people. If you, do, if you punch your people with, that, with this, your bare hand, you can break your hand really easily. And that small attention to detail, which they usually don't pay attention to in these kind of movies, and most people wouldn't even notice, but as someone like me that has done martial arts, that has been in a, in a kickboxing gym, I'm like, that is cool. Because realistically, if you kept punching someone, his hands would be broken right now, and this wouldn't yeah. work. And like we, we, we talked about before, like with historical dramas, I get annoyed when, when they mess, mess things up about the costumes or the buildings. Because when they pay attention to that level of detail, it, it really matters to me because it brings me into the world. Yeah. Um, it's the same with when Flash, like midway through the season, the characters started talking like real people and like have real personalities. It just draws me into that world yeah. more. Some people aren't, aren't going to notice it. But, it's, but if they can make it accurate, go ahead because why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah, and um, the, the fight scenes in this show are amazing because they actually show him getting exhausted. Like, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and, you. I and, love it. And like whenever he gets wounded, like you can tell that he's that he's feeling it. Right. Yeah. Like th- there's that there's this one scene where he fights this ninja guy. Not a big spoiler, but he's he's fighting this ninja guy. He's like, getting like cut up everywhere. Right. And and like I'm I mean okay, it's kind of ridiculous that he's still standing, but at least you can tell that he's that like he's he's feeling the, those wounds and that he's like he's like barely able to like punch the guy. Right. He's he's operating on adrenaline alone. And yeah. it's also if you really think about kind of silly. How quickly he heals. Yeah. He doesn't have a, a, a healing factor yeah. or like the flash where he heals faster. Yeah. It's like, wait a second, weren't you like beat the hell in the last episode? Yeah. But these are minor things because, yeah. like you said, it just, if you just give me a taste of reality, yeah. I can suspend my disbelief. Yeah. And he does that because he gets his ass kicked a lot. Yeah. And, and then towards the end of the season, when he gets in the real red costume, they even show, oh, okay, now we have a costume where, look, he actually has protection. They talk about it's like, oh, this can take a knife. Uh, it has some bulletproof uh, aspects to yeah. it. And, when, and, he, and he's in this big fight towards the end. There's a couple times where he, he's getting smashed, but he's not so badly hurt this time because now he has, he has more protection. Yeah. I really love that attention to detail. This is something that doesn't happen often in other comic movies. Uh, Arrow, I talk about Arrow a lot. They're wearing like leather and they're getting hit and, and, and uh, it frustrates me. I know it's comic books. I know you have to spend, suspend your disbelief. I know, like, in the comic books, Batman is not wearing any armor. But that is hard to buy. But then when yeah. you see in, in the movies, like Bat, uh, the, the Nolan trilogy, he is because it was realistic. Yeah. And they did that with, with Daredevil. It's like, I can't just keep getting my ass kicked. This doesn't make sense. I yeah. need an outfit. Yeah, and um, for, for characters with the show, the, the characterization is amazing. Yes. Yeah, what they did. And my favorite character is uh, the Kingpin. He's he's the main villain in the series, and two uh, thumbs up. Vincent uh, De- D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio, he's amazing in that role. He's uh, he fully embodied that role, and he he like gave us the menacing villain that we love, which Marvel hasn't done a lot. They did, they did with Loki, but he's they, even with Loki. Well, people like Loki, and I I do enjoy his presence. Yeah. 
he's not really that menacing villain. He's but, kind of and I also don't, an oddball. Yeah, and it's kind of weird that people like him because he murdered millions of people during that um, during the Manhattan thing, which they which they uh, bring reference to in Daredevil. They they have a lot of really uh, like subtle references, and that's what, that's what I like. That it's really subtle references. They reference uh, that. They um, they reference all the Avengers uh, in like one conversation, and then um, and then they they even have a, a newspaper kip, a clipping of uh, the Hulk um, from the Incredible Hulk that the fight scene with the Abomination. That's really, and a lot of people are saying that they also have a newspaper clipping of Spider Man in the background too. Ooh. And um, so you the, you like the the, the yeah. subtle clues because because yeah. we disagree on this. I find the the the, the subtle hints at the the rest of the MCU. To actually be, they do the opposite for me. It's like, oh look, they're trying to be subtle. It's obvious. Look, here's our Avenger reference. Look, <laughs> it's to me, it actually does the opposite. I wish it was a little more, because if I'm in that in that universe, if I'm in that world with New York, I expect people to make a lot more casual remarks about people. Oh, did you see Captain America on TV the other day? That's what I would imagine in my head. Now maybe that's yeah. not the case, but that's what I'm imagining. But this is a minor, minor yeah. quibble. Yeah, for for me. That, that that would kind of take me out of it a little bit more. Like, I even found some of the references that I did even a little that took me out of it a, a little bit when uh, the guy was like, um, "Yeah, if if Daredevil had a, a magic hammer or a suit of armor, then maybe I could expect you to get your ass beat." But like that that, that took me out of it a little bit. I don't know because um, it's such a different feel than the from the other. But it is part of the MCU, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. So and and they're going with that uh, darker feel in in the movies too. Like uh, they, they did a little bit with um, with uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. I think they're gonna. They did it with Winter Soldier. That was yeah. probably the, the darkest yeah. for the Marvel films. Yeah, and I think we're gonna get even darker with Civil War. Ooh. But um, yeah, I, re I really love this show. Uh, I really love um, all the characters. Uh, Foggy was a little bit. I was just about to ask you about Foggy. <laughs> okay. That, this is the co this is the the controversy. People, a lot of people have this again. Like we talked about earlier, love hate. It's not not. It's that's really it's mixed. So like for, eh, okay. He, for, yeah, for me, Foggy was he, he was kind of like I was like eh, like uh, yeah. for at first, but then as as the show went on, I I actually I, I liked him. When you said you liked him, but you didn't love him. Yeah, I didn't love him. What I what I Did really he buy the character like is he like that in the comic books? I, I don't. I, don't really I think know. he's actually like a totally different character. Like he, he has that like sense of humor and stuff like that, but he's not like annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not like that exactly in the comics, but um. But what I what I really liked was him and uh, Matt's uh, relationship, like how they how they played off each other. Like, they had good chemistry. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. felt like they were real partners, and they felt like they were real friends that knew each other. Because a lot yeah. of times you get these these relationships, and it's like, yeah, no, you guys aren't really friends. You're just two actors on the screen. Yeah. But they felt like that. What uh, Foggy, who he reminded me of, what was uh, is Cisco from uh, from the Flash. He, he's kind of like that character. Uh, um, and I actually like Cisco more, but um, but uh, he he adds like the the levity to to the, right. to the series. He he's he's not really the comedy relief character, but he adds a little bit of. Uh, I, I hate yeah. it when they have the comedy relief character. Yeah. That's that could at times be problematic. Yeah. Cisco actually they do they pull it off well because he is the comedy relief character and it's pretty obvious. Yeah. But it's well done, yeah. especially in the second half of Flash. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you about Matt Murdock. I liked Matt Murdock a lot, and I liked him as a lawyer. But you didn't see him much as a lawyer. Like, there's that one scene where he's in the courtroom. I wanted to see him in the yeah, courtroom. Yeah, me too. Arguing. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I expected to see. So uh, th that that was kind of weird. But they're they're setting them up like as they, they, they're just starting out. They, they're so just, they're they're gonna be there's gonna be in the second yeah, season yeah. you're gonna see the courtroom. Yeah, I'm sure. We'll, and then maybe. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll even see references to them in the other series that they're doing, because uh, Netflix is planning um, like a Defenders miniseries. So they're going to do uh, Jessica Jones, who I know a lot, not a lot of people know, um, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. So they're they're going to do three three more series, and I, I don't know how they're going to plan it with uh, if they're going to do the Defenders miniseries before they do the second half of. Are they in production? Those shows like are they filming? Um, I know that I'm pretty sure Jessica Jones is a. Uh, uh, Finish filming. It's, kind of, it's probably going to come out this fall because it's scheduled to come out this year. Excellent day. So, um, what what they'll probably they might even do if they have like separate teams working on these shows, and they might 
even have like Daredevil season two going while like Luke Cage season one is going or something like that. But these are all part of the net Netflix Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, okay. they're all they're all part of that, and then they're gonna team up at the end to this thing called the Defenders, which is like uh, the Avengers B team, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I. I really uh, recommend this show, especially if you're into comic book movies and all that kind of stuff. Definitely go and watch it. It's amazing. Good good fight scenes, great action, excellent character drama. I, I, I believe the interactions with the characters. Uh, I really can't say enough of good, good things about Daredevil. There's a few, few minor missteps I feel here and there. I, sometimes I felt like it was slightly bloated at times. Yeah. But... Just for Kingpin alone, yeah. you should watch it. He's, he's the best character in the show. I yeah. love him. I want to see more of Kingpin. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, so that is our talk about Daredevil. Go watch Daredevil. And for our last section of the show, we are now going to pick a movie that is at least 10 years old. We do this every episode. Uh, we try to pick an iconic film that's had a, that's had a major impact on, on, on films as a whole. This week we're talking about Alien. This movie stars Sigourney Weaver and is directed by Ridley Scott. The Jacob, tell me, what do you think of Alien? I I love this movie. It's it's so good. It's um, it was it's it, it was the thing that uh, launched. Yes, we have, we have our little Alien right here. Mm-hmm. It was the thing that launched uh, Sigourney Weaver, um, her career pretty much, and same with Ridley Scott too. Uh, he went on to direct uh. The Terminator Two, no, no, that, that was, that he, was he directed Gre- Gladiator, Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he looked fourteen ninety two. Bla- Blade Exodus, Runner, Blade Runner. His his films right now aren't so good, but um, I'm excited for The Martian, which is another sci fi. movie. Ridley Scott has a lot of historical dramas, like The Duelist, fourteen ninety two. Did Gladiator. Like, did you like Robin Hood? I haven't seen Robin Hood yet. Okay. Kingdom of Heaven. That's actually one of my favorite films. Kingdom of Heaven, the extended edition. Uh, the Duelist is. I think it might be a second movie. Is is it a great kind of art film? Uh, but anyways, let's get off of Lee Scott. Let's go back to Alien. Yeah. Um, well, what I like most about this movie is that it's all takes place in that ship. Yep. And Stromos. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Um, it's like, it, it's so contained, but it has a, has this big, not only really this big crew, but it feels big on the ship, because it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like, this, it's, it's so contained, it's this, uh, contained, um... It's an intimate, intimate atmosphere, yeah, that's yeah. what I feel like. Yeah. They all know each other really well, and at the beginning of the movie, I couldn't tell who the main character was. I'm like, yeah. who am I rooting yeah, for? Yeah, who's that, that, who's yeah. who? Yeah, that, that's what I feel like in a lot of, um horror movies yeah, like you don't really know who the main character is at first but this movie um like and as they weed out all the people spoiler people die in this horror sci-fi movie um they as like this is an old movie we're, yeah. we're gonna have spoilers in this conversation it came yeah. out in 1979 yeah they all get like weeded out and then you realize that sigourney weaver she is the one that's like that that's gonna take out this alien right yeah and you realize and i like how they do it because at first, you, you you don't really know who to root for, but by, as people start to, to to die off, you're like, huh? She's always the one with the good ideas. Like, yeah. wait a second, maybe we should do this. Wait a second. Yeah. But uh, but it's so subtly done. That's what I really love about it. Is it isn't immediately obvious where it's like, oh, she's the smart one, she's the badass, blah blah. No, yeah. no, it's not quite immediately obvious. Isn't um John Hurt in this movie, as the uh, Ian McComb or Ian Holmes, the guy uh, that plays uh, the the android. Yeah. Yes, the well, guy, he okay. played uh, Bilbo in Lord of the Rings. Okay, so but w- I, wasn't John Hurt in Aliens then as the android? Well, I, I'm pretty sure John Hurt was in one of the Aliens movies. But go, but anyways, um, Aliens is actually my favorite of the series. That's my favorite um, Aliens movie. But, but it's, Aliens is a different style of movie. Yeah. Aliens is is is, a, is an action sci-fi yeah. movie. You could say. Yeah. This is a horror, yeah. thriller, whatever. Yeah, in, in this movie, with, with Aliens, it, it's called Aliens because there's multiple. Right. In this one, there's only one alien. And we'll talk about Aliens in a, in a, in a future yeah. episode or a future short on the YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, in this one, it's just one alien, and it gets you like invested in like this this like, singular creature that's taking out all these, all these guys. And I love the sequence at the beginning when they go to the planet and they... Um, 
It's, you see that big thing that in Prometheus you find out you is find the, out what it is. Yeah, sort of because it's Prometheus is kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I really, I really like that um, that that one sequence. Then they find the eggs, and then they get. I, I love the build up because yeah. For me, I'm not really big into horror generally. I'm not like really I, I often find it kind of boring. It's like, yeah, I know. In like an hour, something bad's gonna happen. I just have to wait through this boring stuff. But I was immediately invested when I when I saw Aliens because it just looks so cool. Even nowadays, it's still it's still a cool looking yeah. movie. Yeah, you know they, they did the visual. Was, they did them very well. It's you know all practical effects, yeah. obviously. And just right away, like, whoa, what's going on here? This is so interesting. Uh, they're they're on this ship. They're exploring this 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 planet. Wait, there's like these this other ship that was here, but the people are dead. What what's quite happened? Now they have these eggs. Yeah, and and the first time you see the the chest burster. Oh, yeah. the ch- oh, yeah. that was such an that's such an iconic scene. Yeah, and it's so it's so brutal too because it comes up so brutal. slowly. <laughs> the, ah, the guy's like, like ah. yeah, like like in the, in the future films they they all they like pop out like almost immediately, yeah. but in this time it's like no, pushing through. It's, it's brutal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it's eating him from the inside out. Yeah, it, it's it's fantastic, and, and then there's the whole. People fall off one by one by one, and I love. And again, we're spoiling things here. I love the twist because you think, oh, the alien is the enemy, and he yeah. is the enemy. But then there's another enemy yeah. on the ship. You find out that the uh, the android he has ulterior motives, yeah. and he is uh, Ian. I think Ian Holmes. I think that's that's how you say his name. The guy that played Bill below the rings. He is a fantastic actor. He, yeah. he does great. And I love the stuff of the android. In, in general, I like the android stuff. Even in Prometheus, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he did a fantastic job as the android. The android is yeah. really done well in Aliens. And he also, there was an android in uh, Aliens, the, the, yeah. the second one. So tell me more about your thoughts as, as Ripley starts to take, o- take over as the main character. What are you thinking as, as you're watching this film? You're watching like, oh. Well... First of all, this is—I'm not a really big horror guy, but I'm a really big sci-fi guy. So the the mix was was good, and th- but this movie was scary. At like even watching it as a young age, it, it, this was this was a like a horrifying film. It was like as like to just the way that the alien is designed, like how it looks and how, and how it like uh, like creeps over the edge a lot, and then like the tongue like slowly coming out, the mouth tongue. Slowly coming out. It's awesome. Yeah. And people complained, and I agree with their complaints, about the redesign in the later films. They took away from that that horror. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could remember the, 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 the guy's name that designed the original aliens. They, they are so freaky looking yeah. and weird. Yeah. He, he actually uh, passed away a couple years ago. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because yeah. he, he he, his legacy will live on because the aliens, it, they're so creepy looking. When I first saw that extra mouth come out, I'm like, yeah. that's it. This is badass. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is so amazing. Yeah, I wish that in the. I know they they took advantage of the uh, of CGI in the future films, like Alien, the fourth one, yeah, the, Resurrection. Oh my I god, think. the fourth one was so bad, <laughs> so bad. But um, but I, so but, cheap. There's so yeah. much just ridiculous things that it's like so obvious. Like this doesn't work. Yeah, I kind of yeah. wish that in those films they had kept the uh, the like the practical. Yeah. Like, like they actually had the 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 puppet like mixed with CGI. And it ages worse now because of it. Actually, yeah. if you actually see like the alien the alien resurrection, you go, "Oh, yeah, it's CG." Duh. Yeah, but um they're making another alien movie actually directed by the guy that directed uh, District 9. Um I heard that his other two actually I saw Chappie. I actually liked it. I know a lot of people hated it, but I saw Chappie. I liked it. I haven't seen Elysium, but I heard that it wasn't that great. So I like District 9. That, yeah, that yeah, was really yeah, well done. Yeah, District 9 was an amazing movie. So I hope that he continues uh, with that feel for Alien, for the new Alien movie, because that, that would work really well with that universe. And it apparently is totally disregarding the third and fourth one. Yeah. Totally disregarding those two horrible, awful garbage piece of movies. So, <laughs> such garbage. Is Sigourney Weaver going to be back? Yes. Ooh. So it's, it's going to be kind of weird because it's disregarding those two movies, but she's going to be older now. So it, it maybe maybe she'll like go in like the... The sleep chamber, and then it won't work. Some sun won't work. Well, they just have ages. it to take place 20, yeah. 30 years later. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a big deal to me. It's like this new Star Wars films. It, they take place yeah. later. Hopefully, they mention Newt from the second movie because uh, the, the little girl. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I cause, remember. Because because she died in the third movie, but it was like really weird. Like they didn't really go into it that much. But uh, this is garbage anyway. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just throw that away. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I. 
this is one of my favorite sci-fi movies. Um, Aliens is, is, is in my top five. Alien isn't, but I really love it. Um, what are your, so what are your uh, overall impressions of Alien? It, it may, it's a movie that made me like the horror. Like, like I, I could see myself watching other films uh, in that genre and going, maybe I'll give them a chance now. Because I really never gave them much of a chance. Every time I watched them, it was always this slow build. And I'm like, eh. But it added the other elements. It added the sci-fi elements. I thought it was really well done. I, I liked how... You know they're in the sleep chambers. They're, yeah. They don't even. They don't have faster than light travel. I like these little these little elements added in. And something that I always like personally, you know, I liked how there's there was actually two survivors in, in, in yeah. the film, and it was the cat. Yeah. And, and I'm an animal lover, so I was happy the cat survived. And yeah. they showed the cat throughout the film. I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't want the cat to die. Yeah. And the cat saved. And they had it. in the cat and aliens. They actually yeah. had the cat. They yeah. brought the cat back. Yeah. So I, I like it when. When shows add those 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 TV shows or movies add those little extra positive elements, yeah. it's like oh they say this one little thing that it's not a big deal, but it just puts a smile on your yeah, face. Yeah, it's, it's such a serious movie. You got to have that little bit of of happiness. In the yeah, <laughs> uh, that little bit of happiness. Yeah. Please, just, just just give us a little bit. Don't don't be too relentlessly brutal because yeah. then it gets it's, it's hard to stay interested. In it. Everything's so brutal and miserable. Yeah, and Sigourney Weaver, she. She was just a total badass, and yeah. she and she really helped pioneer the role of the female, legitimate female yeah. badass in the movie. You yeah. know, not the damsel in distress. Not yeah. oh well, the guys can help me. No, I am the badass. Yeah, and and not and like in none of the Alien movies, they, they ever point out the fact that she's a, that she's a woman. That's yeah. another thing I like about yeah. it. It's not like look, look, it's the woman. See, we're we're be, we're being PC. No, yeah. it's just it just is what it is. Yeah, and, and um, what I really like about the Alien movies is that it has perfect pace to it. It has such perfect pace that you're immediately... That you're, you're I'm just, hooked. Yeah, you're just into it the whole time. Um, so, yeah, d- if you haven't seen this movie, go watch it. Then go watch Aliens. Don't watch the other two. It's a g- great movie. Um, and, and, it, don't watch the other two is what you meant yeah, to say. Yeah, 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 don't watch the other two. And don't watch the uh, the Predator Alien movies either. We'll talk about that for another day. No, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah, another yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't watch those, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's Ridley Scott at, at his finest. It's Sigourney Weaver at at pretty much at one of her best, too. Yep, I agree. Yeah. So that was our discussion about Aliens. Go check it out and watch it. And now, the Jacob, we are nearing the end of our show. So we just want to let our viewers know that you can see Geeks at the Movie in a, across a number of platforms. You can see us on Facebook, Geeks at the Movie. You can check us out on the YouTube channel, Geeks at the Movie. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add to Jacob? Uh, no, just make sure to like and subscribe and share our videos. So, this is a big geeks at the movie. I am Shane Goodrich. Jacob does the toes. And we will see you guys next time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you showing me there, Jacob? Oh, oh that's amazing. That's amazing. The, the, the deadly action figure is so powerful. So deadly. At one point in the... The comic Civil War, one of the characters gives Iron Man an Iron Man action figure. Did you read it? Yes, but I can't tell you anything about it, in my opinion, because that's until, the sh- until we actually do the segment. That's, where, that's how we're going to do those segments. So it's really spontaneous when we do them. So there's no discussion beforehand. Again, it's, it's just a short, so it can be less formal. So if the conversation's a little, you know, more all over the place, it's not that big of a deal. Whereas in the actual show, it'd probably be better to, you know, to actually discuss things